Hello everyone, welcome to Lady in the Red Bandana. I have a very special guest with me today as she is my Pilates instructor, but she is the owner of the Pilates Rehab Studio just on the outskirts of Desborough. Hello Kelly. Hello. Are you all right? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. Good, excellent. So if you, I'm just gonna hand it over to you. If okay. you just wanna tell the viewers and the listeners a little bit about yourself. Um, so my name's Kelly, obviously, and I am the owner of the Pilates Rehab Studio. Um, I've been in fitness and worked in fitness since I was 18. Um, that was the first qualification I ever did. Um, I'm turning 43 this year. Um, so it's been a long time being in the fitness industry. Um, but I sort of moved from probably the age of about 30. I moved more heavily into um, more fitness rehab, um, sort of progressing into Pilates, sports massage, and I've sort of really sort of changed my avenue in how I do fitness and how I train people to do fitness as well. So it started off with all the, you know, I was running marathons and jump squat lunges with dumbbells over my head type fitness trainer to, you know, the last 13 years has been a completely different, different type of training. So obviously with an exercise journey, fitness journey, there's always a journey to it. With any industry, I always find that that you start somewhere and you progress and you end and you end up in this position where you're like, how did I get here? How did yeah. how did this happen? So can you tell me a little bit about your experiences that got you to where you are now? Well, I mean, when I was 13, don't even ask me why, but my mum had a Jane Fonda video, right? And uh, I was obsessed with this woman. Um, and every day after school, I used to come home and do this workout video. And then I started designing my own Jane Fonda videos and it was an obsession, <laughs> so weird, isn't it? But I was obsessed with that. I wanted to be Jane Fonda. And um, I can remember being with a careers teacher when I was at school. I weren't great at school. I was a little bit of a rebel. Um, I didn't behave great. And, um, and I said, I wanna, do, I wanna do fitness. And back then my options were a PE teacher or I went in the army. And I didn't want to do either. Um, so when I left school, I left at 16 and I got a job as a recreational assistant at Desborough Leisure Centre. So I was cleaning toilets and putting up badminton courts, you know, just general stuff. And then we employed a new manager there and she was an aerobics instructor. And it was like, wow, she's amazing. You know, they weren't around back then like they are now. And um, she helped me. She got me on my first aerobics course at 18. And then it was like an obsession. Um, I then did aqua, step, circuits. I taught everything you can think of. Um, and I was on an exam one day when I was about 23. And the tutor who was training me, she was the manager of the YMCA in Leicester region. And she came up to me and she said, um, I'd like you to apply for a job we're employing some trainee tutor assessors and I think you'd be really good. Um, and, you know, I was gobsmacked. I never thought I'd do anything like that. And I went for the job interview, um, 23 years old. I mean, I'd been in the industry five years by now. So I was confident with my ability, but to be a teacher of teachers was like something I thought I'd never be able to do. And it was like an X factor audition so all these fitness people all came in and you had to do a 15 minute lecture on a part like muscles or bones or joints or then you had to teach a basic fitness class then an advanced class. Then you had to do a gym induction and then you had to observe people doing exercise and write feedback on them. And then as you went through, if you were rubbish as you were going along, they got rid of you. And wow. all of a sudden, I'm sitting in the first lectures and hearing these really clever people like who'd got masters in sports science degrees standing up talking about the human body. And I'm thinking, oh, God. And there's little old me from Desborough gets up and does a really basic muscle explanation. But then when it came to all the practical stuff, I just started noticing everyone was struggling. 
Um, and by the end of it, I got the job and it was like, wow. Um, so then I spent about probably eight years in total and I worked for the YMCA. I trained to become an actual teacher, tutor um, and an assessor. And then I used to travel from Leicestershire all the way up to Leeds. And I would be away for two weeks at a time, constantly like training in health clubs, training the staff, um, and best job in the world. Absolutely love that job. But then um, I became a mum. You know, you can't just leave your kids for two weeks at a time and just leave, you know. Um, and so then I sort of came back. I, I was plagued with a lot of back problems from being a young girl. Um, I think I saw a physio at 16 years old with back issues. Um, had my first child at 30, had quite a lot of back issues, a lot of numbness in my legs, had quite a few issues going on. Then after I had my daughter, um, three years later, um, my, I had a major back condition that completely changed my life, which is then led me now to where I am now, because um, I'd gone from this really fit girl with a bit of a back condition that I've struggled with to one day I couldn't physically walk. I couldn't get out of bed. I couldn't, I couldn't take my own body weight. Um, and luckily the doctor that came around to see me was clued up enough based off my age um, that this looked really serious. So I got blue lighted to Leicester um, and I'd got a condition called corda equina, which meant my, basically my disc was going through my spinal cord. So I was losing, I'd lost ability to use my legs. I lost my bowel, I lost my bladder. Um, pretty scary time. Um, and you sort of wake up in hospital after emergency surgery and you go, oh my God, like, where do I go now? You know, my whole life has been, people would say down at the school, do you ever walk anywhere? Cause I would run everywhere, you know, that was me. And then all of a sudden I'm laying in a hospital bed a mum of two kids my husband there thinking, oh my, this is life changing. Um, and I was a Pilates teacher already. I trained in that when it first came out in the fitness industry because of the job I did. You had to learn everything that was coming out, but I hated it. I really didn't understand it. I didn't get it because I was this, you know, if they haven't got dumbbells and jumping in the air, I didn't get my head around it. And then when I come home from hospital, it was like, right, I'm on my own now and I need to rehab myself. And I went back to all the Pilates knowledge I knew and it's changed my life, really. Oh, my goodness. There's so much that you've been through in that it, quite short period of time as well. You know, you've um, got to the pretty much top of your game of what you were doing in the fitness industry. And then you're hit with this awful back problem that you got and that is life-changing isn't it really yeah that a lot of people would probably have gone I'm done I'm not I'm not going to carry on so yeah. obviously with these journeys that we all go on there are high points there are low points so I can tell that you had so many high points you know best job in, you said best job in the world you were loving yeah. it and then obviously you became a mum which is lovely and uh, your kids are lovely and you know there there's points in your life that things just keep on changing and yeah. not sometimes for the better but sometimes like your back problem not so good but yeah. those things happen for a reason I think yeah not very good for you obviously but yeah. what so how did you feel so let's go back to like when that first started so when yeah. you first got the problem and what what was going through your head? What, what did you think you were going to do after that? Oof. I mean, the, the, I just opened my first clinic. So I just opened the body rehab clinic and I'd been running for about six months before this all went wrong. Um, and I was doing really well. And I can remember it was say like the February time, because it's coming up to the anniversary of it at end of April. And all of a sudden, I just had chronic back pain. But I look back before that, I was having a lot of signals that were going wrong. You know, down below, there was things that I was feeling and not, not feeling right. I was getting a lot of numbness in both my legs, which is very, you need to be really careful if that happens. And um, 
So all of a sudden, you know, I end up with this and it come on so fast. So I'd gone from a little bit of backache to, I think about three weeks before I ended up in hospital of chronic back pain. Um, but I was like, you would miss you. It's like, I've got to work. I mean, I remember my husband, I'd be crying at home. I'd be popping baclofenic, diclofenic, any drugs I could just to go and massage someone and um, teach a Pilates, or not a Pilates class, a fitness class. Um, and then that morning, I literally physically could not stand up. The pain was, and now I realized my spinal cord was literally being cut in half. I was trying to wait there and screaming. I remember falling, I'd got on the floor and my husband was trying to pick me up, but the more he was trying to lift me, the pressure, I've never felt pain like it. I was just screaming. So then literally then the next thing I know, I'm on that much morphine. I don't know where I am. And I, then I wake up in a hospital bed and bless my family. They were told about this condition. I knew nothing what was happening at this point. And they were told she might not walk again. She might never be able to go toilet normal again. And this, that, and the other. So when I wake up, I'm like, hi, you know, and they're all just like, oh my God. And my dad apparently was just crying, absolutely crying in the corridor. Just like, how do we tell her? How do we tell her that this is her life done? You know, um, and I was blessed. There are a million of people who get quarter equina and they are in a wheelchair. I was very lucky that everything did gradually come back for me. But I knew then I had to change the way I lived. Don't get me wrong, I had many days where I just I just cried. I absolutely cried. It was that part of you going, who am I now? You know, I'm keep fit cow. This is what I do. Um, but I think where the light bulb moment for me was, the rehab that I did on myself and the progressions I made and the strength I ended up with at the end of it really made me feel like you said, is it fate? Was I meant to go through that? I mean, I don't mean to be deep or anything, but I then question like, was I meant to go on that journey now? Because when I then talk to people who have got pain, whether it's a back pain or it's a hip pain, I get how debilitating that is, how sad that is, how lonely that pain is. Because you can tell everyone all day, I'm in pain. It means nothing. You know, you feel like an outsider in your own family because you are struggling to just bend over and pick something up or do simple things. So it's given me a lot of empathy and a lot of love for my own body now. I mean, I'll tell you something now, Mish, right? This is something I've never told anyone. I wake up every morning and the first thing I think before I get out of bed is, can I walk? Still now, it must seriously affect me that my first thought every single morning is putting my feet on the floor because I'm left with a lot of nerve pain. So I've got a lot of nerve damage in my legs. But so I always have that, can I, can I walk? So I know it's left a lot of scarring in me, but on the flip side, it's also given me a lot of empathy and a lot of understanding to other people, if that makes sense. Yeah, totally. It, re it really makes sense because now... Now I know that because I know I know bits of your story, obviously, but I didn't know to what extent it got to. And now I know why you are the way that you are with your clients and your your customers, because you just want to help because you've yeah. seen you've been in that, you know, you've been rock bottom and yeah. you have worked your way out of it. So if you can help somebody who's not quite rock bottom, but has got back yeah. pain, has got something that's wrong that's worrying them they can't do something and they're upset about it you know that you can help them and I can see yeah. that through the way that you teach and the way you talk to people as well so it's oh, really I can't believe you. you went through all of that that's yeah it's crazy yeah. it's but, and I've got I still have a lot of hurdles you know every every day is is can be quite a battle because the thing is with nerve pain the only real way out of nerve pain is medication um, and it's not what I want to take. I don't want to take medication. You know, I, I need to be upbeat and motivated and energetic for my job. And I've got two, they're not small anymore. I've got a 13 year old nearly and a 10 year old. They need a happy bubbly mummy, you know, so 
I've, I've done a lot of research into the drugs and I'm, I don't get me wrong if I hit a place where I couldn't get out of the house and I was I understand people taking these drugs don't get me wrong but I just think for me I'm I don't want to go down that route so you know most days some days in especially nerve pain can be oh you know so it's what I'm left with the, the that's the thing the, you're but you're positive about that as well you're doing things to help yourself through that and yeah. that brings me to what you do to look after yourself so there's yeah a variety of things that people do to look after themselves but with everything that you have been through there must be a lot that you have to do now yes. um, I don't just mean uh, physically what you do but mentally you have to look after yourself too yeah it's been made that's been made into such a huge thing over this period of time as well that mentally we yeah. have to look after ourselves and obviously coming from a the personal care sector myself I like to look yeah. after people and obviously look after you as well and yeah. it's what do you do to make sure you're looking after yourself basically at home like you said, I'm, I am very, very good on the physical side of looking after myself. Like when I came to you with the skin issue, um, you tell me you've got to do this in the morning and that at night, I'm on it. You know, I haven't missed a day or a morning. You, know? you are an um, A star, you're an A star uh, client. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know anyone as, as good as you that does everything oh, like to the T. Yeah. You put yeah, me, you put tell me, me what shame. to do. <laughs> I am. You tell me what to do and I, I will do it to the letter. Um, so, I mean, th that side of things I'm I'm really good at. And, and obviously being in the career I'm in and understanding my body better than probably other people would understand their own body. Um, my body, because I don't know if it's definitely down to the nerve damage, but my body will tighten up very quickly. And especially my glutes, I can get a lot of um, sort of over sort of not full spasms they're not as aggressive as that but my glutes will always start to lock in a little bit and then instantly my back will tighten so I have to do a lot of stretch work I do a lot of roller in that is just part of my everyday sort of routine but it keeps me really mobile um, and moving really well and then obviously my pilates and stuff like that that I do religiously and I use the cross trainer I cut out all impact so I thought I could do impact again but I don't want to ever make my body feel crap um, and I know that jumping in the air does wear your body out so I do a cross trainer for my cardio or a cycle uh, walk with the dog my my biggest letdown to myself is looking after myself mentally is definitely I look after myself mentally by being really busy. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, because you're not thinking about it then. I'm, I'm not in my own head. You know, I don't like to be in my own head space. I don't like to go there. So lockdown has been a challenge for me because I have been at home. So I've kept really busy with the online videos and and I do a bit of Zoom and a bit of PT work stuff over, over the internet, but I've not loved it. It's not my cup of tea, all this internet stuff. I'm a bit old school. I'm a bit sort of my dad's age, really, I think, really. Um, but yeah, I keep saying to my husband, because he's really stressed, he's worked manic, and I keep saying to him, we need to learn to meditate. I know that would be good for me. Because when I'm trying to do your treatments, when I'm saying to you, can you relax? I can't tell you to relax. I know that I can't. Because you don't want to. Do you know, we went to the Belfry, all us girls once. And I think I said this to you. You're so used to me, aren't you now, that I just don't shut up, do I? And uh, we went to the Belfry and you got a free spa thing when you went. And I opted for, I think it was like a full body scrub thing. And um, I could tell I was supposed to be really quiet, which made me really uncomfortable. It's like a, like a nervous energy that I get that I think, oh no, I can't lay here. Whereas my best mates, they'll go, oh my God, that was amazing. I fell asleep and all this. Stuff. 
Whereas I have to lay there and I'm like this. <laughs> Uh, and then I ended up going, do you mind if I talk? And then she was like, oh, no, that'd be lovely, actually. Because she, this girl said no one talks to her. She's in there for eight hours in the day doing these relaxation things. And it's quiet. So I literally spoke all the way through that one as well. So it ain't just that is your, That's your way of relaxing, though. Because yeah. you're lying down. We're doing whatever it is that we need to do for you. And just talking it out just sometimes helps whether it's yeah. about your day or whether it's about what's going on in your life, you know, that helps a lot of people. You're really good at looking after your skin. I know you are. Uh, you're, like I said, A-star client. So let us know a little bit about what was going on there. What happened at the start before you came to me? What was going on? Never had a problem with my skin at all. Had cordroquina. Six months later, all of a sudden developed like a form of adult acne that was all around my nose, around my chin, and they would be really red and sore. And it was like a bit, it was acne, but also looked a bit like cold sores as well, like really horrible. And obviously in my job, because I'd gone back to work pretty much within three months of back surgery. So I was back working and um, I was embarrassed. You know, there's this, I'm supposed to be this health and fitness guru as such. And I should have brilliant skin, you know, if I eat well and all this that we promote. And um, I just got in a mess with them. So I went to the doctors and their option was antibiotics. So off I go on antibiotics, as you do. And um, had these antibiotics for X amount of time, totally cleared my skin up. So they said I'd got some kind of bacterial infection. And then as I come off the antibiotics, it come back again. So I was desperate. I was reading everything. I was buying products that you wouldn't believe, trying everything and everything was making me worse. The only thing that was getting rid of this skin thing was antibiotics. Um, but I'd been left because I'd got, I've got bowel damage. I'd been left with a lot of tummy problems anyway. So going toilets always been a real struggle since quadraquina. A um, lot of stomach cramps, a lot of bloating if I don't eat the right foods. Um, and obviously then I was loading antibiotics for two years into my system. And then I met your mum, who was like this little shining star. And when I said to her, she was like, no, that's it. You're coming with us. And that's then when I met you. Um, and yeah, I just thought, right, I've got to trust you. I've, to come off antibiotics was really scary. Do you remember? I was just like, because I knew it was going to come remember. back. Um, and then it was like, right, I've just got to put all my faith in, in you and just go, right, this girl knows what. And I could tell you knew what you were talking about. And it was like, right, here we go. Um, and I did your, as you know, I did it to the absolute letter. And I think within, I mean, within a month, Mish, I looked different, didn't I? Yeah, you um, really did. My, my six month plan that I was with you was it six months I was yeah, with you? Six months, I mean, obviously, yeah. I've never left you, but yeah. within them, that consistent treatment, I mean, within three months, my skin looked incredible, didn't it? And that's got to do with perseverance as well. So, for someone yeah. who, for someone like you who likes things done straight away, likes it done yes. perfectly all the time, that's yeah. the thing that I worried about the most because I always has to say to just persevere but you did yeah and I think that yeah. is look, that's great that just shows that you had the the passion to get it to that stage and that yeah. comes through with your work as well with your career and your um with the uh, studio as well you just want it to work and yeah I think that is reigns true in loads of different industries as well if you want something to work it will work yeah. if you put if you put the work into it yes do you know what I yes. mean and I mean, uh, you always say we can only guide people we yeah. can't they always say that you can take a horse to water but you can't make it drink and I think me and you are both in them sort of professions you're a carer you generally want to help and you're giving people tools and help but you can't physically unless obviously I could go to a client's house and watch them train don't get me wrong but people haven't got the money to be able to do that so you know, you you can only do your absolute best for a client. They have got to put that back work into it, haven't they, to succeed? Absolutely. And I think if you don't, it's like the homework. It's like you can do your 
let's forget about what's going on at the moment. You could do your Pilates classes uh, like you had been doing with big classes and we're, we're coming in, doing up. But if we weren't doing things at home, so your homework as such, yeah. you, you can't ever expect for your back to get better, for no, your, don't. you know, and for your skin to get better if you're not doing that home care and the, and the homework that's involved. And I think that's really important. Like no matter what advice you get, you could get the best advice in the world from the best Pilates instructor, the best um, uh, skin therapist. But if you don't listen to them and you don't do it, you can't expect the result at the end of it. I think that's so important. We live in a we live in a world now, don't we, where people do want it now. Everything's becoming so much easier. You know, I go mad about people who stand on an escalator. You know, it drives me mad because it was it, it was designed to speed up movement and then all it's done is slow it down. You know, even the ones at an airport, you know, they go like 0.0 mile an hour. They are if you walk across that. You be glide, good. don't you? Yeah, but yeah, then I'm at an airport and then there's people just standing <laughs> there. And I mean, it's not too nice for that. Yeah, um, I know. But yeah, I think a lot of people now, and it's I don't think people have got lazier. I think things are invented that make people feel like they want things quicker and 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 a lot of my biggest heartache in the whole world is women and dieting. It breaks my heart to see what women do to themselves, you know. And I, I, I worked in that industry for 12, 13 years, trying to help women lose weight. And it got harder as the years went on because when I started at 18 doing little bits and bobs as I was training along, um, there wasn't as many, there's always been diets, don't get me wrong. I've watched my mum on them for her whole life, bless her. Um, but I think as I started hitting 26, 27, and I was working with clients for weight loss, there was so much out there now. Women are confused unbelievably about don't eat carbs, eat carbs, don't eat after this time, eat this time, don't eat breakfast, eat breakfast. <laughs> it's crazy, you know, isn't it? it? It is like this mind mess of information that has just been feeded to women and women in particular more so, um, I do believe personally without being sexist, I think they target vulnerable women. They know what they're doing. They know who they're going for. They're going for the desperate woman who feels crap about herself, just is desperate to look a certain way. And then up pops this idea of you take this drink and pop this pill and you will lose all your weight. It's heartbreaking. I am asking everybody this question and it's, do you feel empowered by the knowledge that you have? Yeah, I I think um, you can never, ever stop learning in my industry, same as your industry, I bet. Um, there's stuff, I mean, I've done that many courses in the years, it's ridiculous, and yet there's still so much I don't know. The human body is incredible, but I do believe having the knowledge I had, I have to remember sometimes in my head when I do come across people who don't look after themselves the way I want to, them to, you know, clients of mine, I'm like a nagging wife, you know, have you done any stretches, have you done any roller, have you done this, have you done that, and I'm constantly, and I have to remember that I'm the way I am because of the industry I'm in. Um, and my love for it as well you know and a lot of people hate exercise and they hate having to I mean I've I've looked after some incredibly fit people who will go out and run like an ultra marathon yet they won't stretch after just won't just won't do it yeah you know and and I was just say to them look you've got to put that side of your fitness as important if you look at a footballer you look at Mo Farah you look at these top athletes their rest days their nutrition their stretching their rollering all of that side is as important if not more important than their real intense physical training because we all know that if your body is not rested enough it can't improve it can't get stronger it can't get fitter 
Um, so it, it, it always shocks me when I've worked with certain, and they're incredibly intelligent, amazing clients, love them to pieces. But yet that, that little bit of that self-care, keeping your body young and healthy by keeping it mobile, flexible, you know, they don't want to do it. And it baffles me. But then I have to go, yeah, but Cal, they're not you. So, yeah. No. Exactly, yeah. So you, in a way, so, you know, the answer to that question is yes, you do feel empowered because you have got that knowledge and you want to give it to people, even if they're not going to take it. Yes. You are still going to give that. And that's the result that you want with your clients and your customers, I'm assuming, is that they're, that they're happy, healthy. Oh, definitely. That's their, that's their result, isn't it, really? At the end yeah. Of it. Right, let's talk about somebody who wants to get into your profession. Whatever age, they can be young, they can be somebody who wants to change their career. What would you recommend for them? So, um, I mean, I talked to my son about this loads because he wants to come within this realm. Um, obviously, going back in my day, it was totally different. Only the really clever, clever kids went to uni. You know, most of us left school, people went on to college, sixth form. Um, so I started in that old school tradition of from cleaning a toilet um, and then going on to do vocational qualifications within fitness. So when I ended up getting this job at the YMCA, there were six of us that got jobs all similar similar ages and we were all going to be the new team as we sort of learned the job and I was the only one who went and got a degree so they'd all gone to uni and got a sports science degree and I was the only one who didn't have one and the weirdest thing was they obviously knew probably more than me anatomy wise but every single one of them had to start from the beginning in the job to learn how to be a teacher so it's that weighing up of do you go down the vocational route, which you can do. There's some amazing training companies out there. The YMCA is still one of the biggest. There's premier industry training as well. So you can either just step in and go, right, the way I did it was I just consistently done more courses. So did my aqua, did my step, did my gym instructor, did this, did that. Then I did my personal trainer uh, qualification at the end of all of that. Um, and then I continue. So I've always done courses and courses and courses. Um, if you go to university and get your sports science degree, yes, it will give you amazing knowledge. Um, but it's then where do you want to go with that? You can go on and just be a personal trainer pretty much off the back of it. But like a lot of my friends, um, when I was training with them, they came out, but with no experience on how to train a client or how to design a program. Um, so I suppose it's it depends where you want to go in fitness, really. If you want to be a, a personal trainer, um, you could go and get your sports science degree, but it won't give you more money than the guy who's gone and got his personal trainer qualification as such. But then if you want to go down the therapy route like that, I talked to my lad, he's 13 nearly, and he wants to be a physio. He's already, he's, well, he's going to be a professional footballer. There's no, that's it. There's no others. But it's like, let's, let's just try and get another job just in case, you know, <laughs> he's going to be a pro footballer, according to him. Um, but already he's like, well, if I can't be a footballer, I'm going to look after footballers. Um, so if you want to go down that route, if I could go back again, I would definitely have gone and got my physio degree. I just don't want to go back down that route now. You know, I like where I am now. So it's like, actually, you know, I'd love to probably have that extra string to my bow. But also a lot of, I mean, I did my level five sports therapy degree in uh, Oxford, um, and, and the knowledge I learned through that was incredible. And all the add-on training I do down at Oxford, uh, I feel like they give me enough knowledge to do my job at the best level I can. Um, but if I was an 18 year old starting out, I think a physio degree, if you wanna go down that route is fantastic. Um, 
or like you say, you've got your sports science. But I think nowadays as well, Mish, if you look into degrees out there, there's so many different types of degrees now in sport and fitness. So whether you want to go into sport management sort of type degrees or um, sports psychology, you know, all them different realms now, that but they weren't around when I was training. Um, so, yeah, I think it just depends where you want to go with it. There's, the thing is with personal training, um, you have to work your butt off to earn money. You really have got a graph to earn the money. Um, and the reliable income of it being on its own. You know, if Louis said to me tomorrow, I want to be a personal trainer, mum, I would push him to get more than that, if you know what I mean. Have more skills to his bow than that because it's a cracking job. Um, it's a brilliant job, but it's tough. It's hard work. You yeah. are working when everybody else is should be. You should be at home. You're working early morning. You're working late nights. You're working weekends. You know, I've never had weekends off in my whole career because whether I was doing a course, teaching people to be a personal trainer, I was working weekends. You know, even in the job I've got now, you know, I'm working weekends. It, that's the negative to this type of industry is you are working when other people are not. Thank you so much for being a part of this. I really, really appreciate it. Um, is there anything problem. else that you'd like to say? No, I think what you're trying to do is fantastic. I think it's a lovely thing to bring people together like this and share experiences. Because I think like you said, you know, especially as a, as a business owner, you're on your own a lot, you know, and people do look in on you and just think you live this perfect life. You know, I can remember being in a pub um, and people, well, this has happened to me loads of times and I'm, I'd say I'm in a pub or I'm somewhere that people just aren't expecting to see me and they'll go, what are you doing in here? <laughs> why are you having fun? Why are you, why are you not <laughs> training everyone? Yeah, they get this vision of you that you just sit at home eating lettuce, drinking <laughs> yeah. water, you know. And um, and I think uh, in our industry, we should lead a certain lifestyle, which I try my hardest to. But we've all got our vices, haven't we? You know, we've all got them times you need to blow up a bit of steam and, and be normal as such. But um, yeah, I think I think what you're doing is lovely. Oh, so thank well you. you, Mish. Oh, well, thank you for being a part of it. It's been lovely. And you haven't mentioned my eyebrows once. <laughs> not not yet. You've got glasses on, you're hiding them. them. <laughs>